from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. We're here at VMworld 2018. You're watching theCUBE, two sets, three days, over 95 guests. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is Yup Piskar, and uh, we've got a little bit of news to talk about. Uh, so lots of announcements made at the show. One of them is that VMware has purchased uh, the, in, the intent to acquire Boston-based Cloud Health Technologies, and I am thrilled to have on the program, back to the program actually, I've had in my Boston area studio and seen it lots of shows, Joe Kinsella, who is the founder and co and CTO yes. uh, of Cloud Health. You got it, uh, good to see you again, Stu. Good to see you. Absolutely. All right, yeah. so, you know, to, just to get out of the way, the Boston Business Journal uh, says for about 500 million, so I, I know you can't comment on the dollars, but this is a big deal. 200 person company, as I said, Boston based, right down the road from us. Yeah. I'm stopping, your new headquarters is opening on Thursday, which I'm stopping at uh, on the way back uh, from the airport. So. Congratulations, first of all, and uh, tell us what's 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 the feeling like of uh, of your firm. It's uh, it is exciting. We certainly weren't um, uh, looking to get acquired. So as you know, we raised a fairly large uh, D round last year, yeah. and uh, we were focused on building a big public company. And uh, what we found along the way of uh, talking about a partnership with VMware was there was just a lot of synergy, uh, both uh, uh, vision, strategy, as well as cultural synergies. And I think it. Uh, Somewhere along the way we realized this made a lot of sense. So, so it is a big deal and we're very excited about it. Awesome, so Joe, one thing I like, I see you and your company at cloud shows. Yes. <laughs> you know, this is where we have, uh, the, one of the things that excited me this week is we talk about like, you know, I'm a networking guy. We talk about the networking, they're talking about multi-cloud the way that NYSERA was pre-acquisition. Yes. So VMware talking a lot more about multi-cloud. They had Amazon up on stage and I think the acquisition of, of Cloud Health Technologies is, you know, how does VMware become more of a cloud first? So, for people that don't know Cloud Health Technology, tell us a little bit about, you know, the origin, your founding, sure. and you know, where you play in the ecosystem. How much of a part is VMware today versus, you know, everything else? Yeah, without a doubt. So, um, uh, so I founded the company six years ago, and it was uh, I was an early pioneer in the public cloud. So, in the 2010, 2011 timeframe, I was uh, building out large scale public cloud infrastructure. Sounds a lot less impressive when I give you the numbers now, but then it was very impressive. And uh, in the process of doing that, just realized the incredible complexity that you had to confront to actually be successful in the public cloud. Uh, both complexity of uh, deploying and managing uh, uh, you know, efficiently that infrastructure, but also the complexity of all the tools that surround that management. And so I set out with Cloud Health to build a single SaaS platform that customers could use to what today you might call build out a cloud center of excellence is kind of the terminology, which is to have one central platform where you can uh, centralize and distribute cost management, uh, security compliance, as well as uh, proactive governance, all the way to integrating back into your back office and your service desk and your incident management to make the cloud just part of how you deliver your business services. And uh, so that was the journey six years ago, and it's uh, been a tremendous journey to date. Yeah, no, you, you were definitely a pioneer in this, so congrats what you've done, because I remember six years ago, come on, cloud was simple, I swipe a credit card, and <laughs> we'll just do this and everything, and now everybody kind of understands, not only cloud, but especially multi-cloud, getting my arms around how I yes. manage all this environment. Maybe touch on how, how does multi-cloud fit into this whole discussion, and yeah. what does cloud health do with VMware today versus uh, everything else? Yeah. Sure, yeah. So, so when I started the company, multi-cloud was part of the vision, but let's be honest, there weren't a lot of companies really doing multi-cloud. Uh, usually at best, especially in the enterprise, if an enterprise was even doing cloud, they were choosing a single cloud provider. They really weren't trying to actually um, you know, have multiple, uh, multiple providers. I think what's happened is in the last 24 months is uh, enterprises went from being a single cloud to pervasive multi-cloud is what I call it, which is their portfolio now includes you know, dozens of SaaS products, it includes multiple public cloud providers, it includes multiple private cloud providers, and it's just a very complex, you know, heterogeneous portfolio they're managing. We were built for that, um, uh, it, it finally come true, and I think what it does is if you think what you need to be successful in that environment, if you're going to build out a cloud center of excellence across a pervasively heterogeneous environment, you need a single platform that does that for you. So today our product uh, supports uh, Amazon, Google, Azure, and it also supports VMware, so it integrates directly into vSphere, uh, does cost management, does uh, inventory visibility, um, as well as uh, uh, migration recommendations uh, uh, to and from multiple different public clouds 
out. So, so it's a it's a great uh, synergy between what it is uh, that VMware does across its rich, robust portfolio and uh, cloud health. So, talk a little about the um, the new possibilities you're now opening up, uh, being acquired by VMware. You know, what what does that mean for that multi-cloud strategy? Yes, so I think Pat touched on it in his keynote, and I thought uh, he did a masterful job of, of describing how Cloud Health, the brand, will be a kind of a core brand of VMware, and it, this will be a centerpiece property across integrating uh, across various different um, kind of properties across their SaaS portfolio. Uh, but I also think uh, uh, you know, VMware is very uh, aware that there's a lot of choices that customers want. They, want, uh, you know, they, they, they may want to choose uh, different products for log managing, conf configuration management, for, uh, you know, for application performance management. And I think um, uh, you know, we're going to continue to provide that choice to customers so that it won't be just a VMware-centric um, uh, product. But at the same time, you look at the richness of the VMware portfolio, which is you, you look at what they do uh, on-premise and you look at what they do around cost management inside the data center. You look at um, VMware on AWS is, uh, you know, is an offering. There's just huge potential synergies between what we do and how we can extend our value value proposition into those areas much faster as part of VMware. So as the, you know, as the founder of the company, uh, what excited me about this was this was not taking me away from my vision, it was an opportunity to accelerate my vision, which is really what kind of got me there to this idea that uh, we, we would be acquired. How do you think your, um, your products will help VMware, you know, for instance, in the, the VMware Cloud on AWS, will, do you think you'll integrate on that level to help VMware you know, accelerate their proposition as well? Yes, I, uh, I believe, uh, I'm actually very excited about VMware on AWS because I think we all know that VMware has been optimizing its stack for so many years. There's incredible efficiencies that have been built into it that uh, I would like to uh, bring up to a, a business perspective so that our customers can understand them and take advantage of them in an easier way. And so I think there's great potential there. I probably don't want to get over my skis too far here on this one, but, uh, but I do think it's one of the things you'll see early um, post-close of this deal. Yeah, I, Joe, I, I think the timing's really good. If this acquisition had happened two years ago, you know, we'd be talking about vCloud Air. Um, my, my joke would be to say, okay, when does the update come that says all migration should push you to VMware at 99.8% <laughs> of the time? Um, no, but you know, right, VMware, it's not only AWS, you know, we saw, saw the VMware presence at the Google show, yeah. uh, you know, to Google Cloud show, and they're trying to position themselves more in this multi-cloud world, which is, you know, where you know your 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 company sits. Joe, what what, what advice you know if uh, you know do you give to companies that you know uh, you know software companies out there? How do they help customers in this multi-cloud world? It's a big environment. You help with a bunch of things, but you know there's there's licensing. There's uh, you know all sorts of variability out there. It's a you know I I say that it's this giant elephant there, and you know you might have a main core of it, but there's lots of partners you need to work with and customers have you know, just the, the paradox of choice out there. So yes. you know, how do you as a software company and you know, be successful in this space? Yeah, so I think um, uh, myself as a software company or as our customers? Well, so, so what advice do you give to you know, your peers out there yeah. and you know, if you were given Pat advice as to how do we you know, be, be even more successful as a multi-cloud player? Oh, I think, you know, I think their strategy is very mature uh, and uh, that was one of the things that got me excited about about it, which is I think um, there was a time at which I think um, uh, uh, companies were very territorial about how they approached uh, kind of the pervasive heterogeneity that we're, we're, we're entering now. And I think uh, being open in the way that they are, that, uh, that, that the, uh, all of the properties that customers may choose may not be a single vendor. There, there's going to be lots of different vendors and, and lots of different choices. And freedom of choice, I think, is kind of one of the fundamental uh, tenets of a successful strategy at this point in time. And so I think, um, I would just uh, you know, highly encourage that for everyone, which is I think, uh, you, you know, the, the old world is the old world now. Like we've entered kind of a new frontier, we have to think differently, we have to act differently. And I think what I really love about, about what Pat's doing is, is he's harnessing the, the DNA and the, kind of the strength of VMware, which is just a, you know, they've been a tremendous provider of great software for two decades and uh, kind of bringing it into the, the, the next frontier of, uh, of cloud. And I think they've got a lot to bring that we have not seen yet that we're going to see over the next few years. And I just hope to be part of that. So you, you mentioned the new frontier, right? So, uh, you know, VMware is still somewhere in between the old 
Frontier and the new. So one of the um, you know, problems we've seen in the past is VMware and its relation with the service provider world. So what do you think you'll add to that mix to help service providers maybe move from the old world into that new world as well? Now, Yub, is that, that feels like a fastball down the middle, so, uh, <laughs> so I, I just have to tell you. So the, the relationship with VMware started 18 months ago, and it um, uh, started with an SVP at uh, VMware, and it was all about partners. And uh, so one of the things you might not see externally from Cloud Health is that there's really two products in Cloud Health. There's our direct product that uh, we deliver to enterprises and SMB, and then there's a separate product that we sell to service providers, and it enables them to deliver managed services on, to their customers on top of the cloud. And uh, we built it in a way where the products are really one product that actually are sold as two separate products. And so I think uh, what we're going to bring is a, a, a real uh, a strong opportunity for partners across VMware. And that's why the opportunity, the business relationship started as a potential partnership around partners and uh, eventually evolved into where we're at today. So we're excited for that. I think it's, uh, you know, I, I tell people that the, um, the, the, the cloud is the single greatest threat and the single greatest opportunity for partners. Uh, and uh, the difference between which one you're going to experience over the next few years is whether or not you can figure out how to harness the disruptive potential of the cloud. All right, so sounds like I've got a question for AJ Patel tomorrow when I interview him <laughs> uh, toward, towards the end of the show. Uh, because yeah, the service provider's there. Um, all right, I, I know you can't talk a lot, but uh, you know, g give us roadmap. What what sort of things you know is it like? You know, I, I see NSX being pervasive. Are there integrations today? Do you have visibility in Cloud Health? Is that something from the networking side uh, that you do or would uh, tie into? I, I I think back. You know, I've been in this long enough. When EMC bought VMware, it was here's all the cool stuff we could do, and I was in engineering, being like, oh my god, it's going to take us five or six years to do most of this stuff. Yes. Um, it got done, but you know, there, there's long hard engineering work, so 18 months, what can you talk about that's been done and give us a little bit of what should we be looking for? Yeah, I mean, NSX is a tremendous uh, uh, you know, offering and I think um, uh, what you see is, I, I'm, I'm really looking at this as more kind of like tier one, two, and three integrations. And uh, uh, tier one, I think you're going to see more around uh, the cloud properties. Uh, you know, probably things, things like uh, uh, VMware on AWS and you'll see you know, the SaaS products um, uh, you know, uh, such as Wavefront and things like that. I think, I think that's, there's a natural extension and a natural movement and a natural value proposition we can bring on top of those. I think uh, uh, tier two, I think you'll probably see a lot more hybrid, um, uh, where you're going to see us kind of take advantage of that rich portfolio in VMware and extend it and add value on top of it um, uh, to our customers. And I think tier three, I think I'll leave uh, quiet for now, but I think there's some really amazing potential of what it is that, uh, that we can do together based on what I'm seeing exists in VMware and things that maybe are being built that uh, are not yet public. I think there's some, some really great, um, great potential of what we can bring to the market around uh, how they can manage their multi-cloud portfolios into the future. All right, Joe, last thing I wanted to ask you. Boston-based company. VMware had a strong presence in the Boston area. You know, I know a lot of people in their Cambridge facility, but talk about the tech scene in, in Boston, being a founder, you got a new headquarters, you know, getting acquired, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm a bit of a homer, yes. uh, but, you know, supporting uh, people so that I don't necessarily have to travel across the country or across the world. So sure. give, us, give us your viewpoint on the Boston um, area these you, days. You know this, which yeah. is, it is incredibly vibrant what's happening in Boston, which is, uh, you know, the business is being built, the entrepreneurs that are there, just the entire ecosystem is working at a pace I have not seen in over two decades. And, uh, and, and they're building real meaningful businesses. When you actually lift up the cover and you look at what these entrepreneurs are building, uh, they're going to be, uh, it's going to be an important tech scene for decades to come based on just what I'm seeing happen today. Uh, I've, I, you know, I look today and a lot of people like to uh, give the credit to the, the person who founded the company. There's thousands of people who touch this business, right? And just including to the, the, the tremendous effort from every person who joined this company, there's been people like yourself and, and people who've added value uh, in, in many countless ways along the way. And it all came primarily from a Boston community that was there to support me and, uh, and my company as we grew up in the Boston tech scene. So it's been, you know, I've been, I've been blessed to actually be surrounded uh, by great people in one of the best cities in the world. All right, well hey Joe, congratulations again. Thank you. Um, if you don't know, they even have superhero stickers of this guy uh, that they <laughs> give out at conferences. So, Joe Kinsella, Cloud Health uh, Technologies, congratulations to you. you. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the grand opening back in Boston when I fly back after the show. 
for you, Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. Be back with lots more. Thank you.